Folium is a very popular library for making maps in Python. It's not my favourite thing in the world, but using it you can quickly get some nice looking maps with data on them, and so it's quite popular. It's built on top of the great JavaScript library Leaflet, which is also incredibly popular. If you see a website with a map on it, chances are it uses Leaflet. Folium enables the use of Leaflet in Python. Some people do everything in notebooks and some people don't, for example me. To use Folium, you more or less need to use a notebook. So start by installing Folium with pip, then import it, then we make our first map. You create a map object with the map function. The argument gives the center point of the map. This is what you'll see if you run this code. You can scroll and zoom on the map as usual. The center point I gave was somewhere in the middle of Exeter, so this is what's initially centered in the map. We can add functionality to the map. For example, this command makes it so that when you click on it, it shows the latitude and longitude of where you clicked. You'll see this little pop-up appear when you click on somewhere. This function makes it so that wherever you click on a point on the map, a pin gets dropped with the pop-up text interesting. So I'll let you do that one for yourself. Here we change the background tiles. By default, Folium uses OpenStreetMaps as the map base layer. You can change that to something else. For example, the stamen terrain tiles show the topology of the area. Here we lose a lot of the road and place names, but we can see the hills and valleys. I admit, Devon is not very topographically interesting, but try this style in a mountainous area and it looks quite cool. We can add pins to the map using the marker function. Pins have all kinds of customizable properties, including the location, pop-up text, and icon style. This is the result of the previous command. There are other kinds of marker, and we can basically draw anything we want onto a map. Here I've added a fill circle. This is the result. Note the radius argument, I've set it to 100. This does not mean 100 meters. The circle will actually scale as you zoom in and out of the map, so you should try that. Saving maps is surprisingly complicated. This is the magic incantation that does it. You might find you first need to install a couple of packages like Selenium and Pill to get it to work. What's going on is that Folium generates HTML which can render in a browser. If you want to save that as an image, you need to open the HTML it outputs in a browser, this is what Selenium does, and then call the browser screenshot function. We then use the image processing library Pill to save the screenshot. This is a very elaborate method. Note the argument 5 in the 2PNG function is the number of seconds to wait for the map to render. If you have a complicated map, you might need to increase it. A much simpler way is to just screenshot the map yourself out of the notebook, but it's nice to know you can do it with code if you have to. A choropleth map is a very popular way to visualize data across a geographic area. This is a choropleth from 1826 showing access to basic education in France. Darker means more schools. We're going to use the boundary data for the English regions that we got earlier to make this map of population. Here's the code where we read the data, which is basically the same code we used earlier, so look back at the previous videos for full explanation. The differences come because Folium wants us to use GeoJSON, not shapefiles or shapely polygons. The easiest way to do this is to use the GeoPandas library. This code organizes our data container a little differently and then turns it into a data frame. We then use the toJSON method to convert that data frame into a JSON string. Then we use the JSON module to convert that string back into a Python dictionary in the right format, which is what Folium needs. There's one more trick. Notice that we're doing two transformations instead of just one. The first one changes BNG coordinates to lat lon as before, and the second one swaps the order of all the coordinate pairs. Folium wants us to put longitude first, then latitude. Having worked with a fair amount of code in different languages that deals with coordinates, having a lat lon the wrong way around is a super common bug. At least for England it's obvious. If it's the wrong way around, you'll see all your data appear in the Indian Ocean. Next we have some data to plot. These are populations of the various regions of England. Folium doesn't want a dictionary, it wants a data frame, so let's create one. Finally, this is the code which generates the map. We give it the polygons as geodata and the values as data. We then tell it the key to identify each polygon with the key on parameter, and we tell it the column names of our data frame. We then pass various customization options to make the plot look nice, then add the chloropleth layer to the base layer, and this is the result. Take it in for a moment. Darker green means more people. About 40% of the population of England lives in London and the southeast, so that's the darkest green area. Another type of map people like to make with Folium is a heat map. Folium has a plugin which will make one for you in a very straightforward way. We first make some random data. This just creates 100 points scattered around a given center and associates a random value with each of those points. We then create the heat map and add it to the base layer. This is the result. I see a lot of bad heat maps and this one is no exception. There are at least two things wrong here. The first is there's no color bar. I won't go through it in detail, but to make a color bar, we're using here a library called Branca rather than Matplotlib to define a color gradient. Then we're adding that gradient to the base map and using it when coloring the heat map. This is the result of the previous code. I still don't like this very much, and I'll show a final example to explain why. This is the same code as last time, but instead of plotting 100 data points, we're just plotting one. This is the result. Although we have a point located at a precise latitude longitude coordinate, the heat map plugin has spread it out, and this spreading is relative to the zoom level. So if you zoom way out, like here, the whole of the UK is covered. You can also see that the point has a colored halo. Our point has the exact value of one, but the heat map also shows green and blue as well, which corresponds to values less than one. Basically, the heat map plugin applies some smearing to the data. This smearing, like with polygons and markers in Folium, is relative to the zoom level. If we go back and look at 100 random points, the smearing has made a kind of a cloud. If we zoom out, the cloud merges into a big blob. 
Having the way the data looks depend on the zoom level is not good in my opinion. As a data scientist, you're trying to make precise statements about what your data is doing. If you generate a heat map and how it looks is mostly due to some arbitrary smearing radius and zoom level, then you aren't doing a very good job of precisely visualizing the data. Now, you can control these parameters by passing arguments to the heat map plugin, but generally I'd suggest using core plots where possible and either avoiding heat maps or using them very carefully.